Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This is the second video on object-oriented programming in PHP. Uh, in this video, I'm just I'm going to show you one way you can use object-oriented programming with multiple classes. Now, this video is is sort of we're going to create a garage. A garage can hold any amount of cars. So the two classes we're going to create today are garage and car. So let's start off with the garage. Create a new PHP file. I called it garage.php and we just we start off class garage. And for our garage, we're going to we're going to have three instance variables. The first one is the name of the garage. The second one is how many cars can fit in this garage. So I'm going to call it space. And the third one is going to be the actual cars that are going to be in our garage. So the first thing we need to do when we want to create a garage here, we want to use the, the, the construct function that we learned in the first tutorial. So public function underscore underscore construct. And now we're, we're first, we're only going to take in the name of the garage and how many cars the garage can hold. So we're going to say this name equals name and this space equals space. Now our garage is going to act like a stack. So we're going to be able to push and pop items off a stack. But before we move on to the stack functions, let's just create the getters for the cars. So, or getters for the garage. So public function, we'll call it get name. And this will return this name. And then public function get space, return this space. Simple. Now let's create some some valid validation functions. So the first one we're going to check is this garage empty? So we'll say public function is empty. And this will return that the amount of cars is equal to zero. If it's zero, it's going to return true, thus it's being empty, else false has cars in it. And now another one to see if it's full. So if the amount of cars in the garage is equal to the maximum cars it can hold. So say if the maximum is five, if there are five cars in the garage, then the garage is full. Now the next one we're going to create, we're going to get how many cars are in this garage. So we're going to call public function total cars and this will just return the amount of cars. We're using the count function because count checks to see how many items there are in an array simple. Now let's get on to the stack functions. Um, the three stack functions we want to create are push, pop, and top. Push is going to take a car and add it to our garage. Pop is going to remove the last car that we put in the garage. And top is going to return the first car in the garage. So let's go ahead and let's do the push function first. Now push, we want it to only take a car in. So we can typecast a variable to a car by just putting the class name in front of the variable. So say if I wanted to only take in an integer, I could just type in int car and it will typecast that variable to car or integer, sorry. Now the first thing we have to check before we can push something into this garage, we have to make sure that it's not full. So we're just going to check if this is full with an exclamation point in front of it. That way it negates the result. So if there's room in the garage, let's go ahead and add that car. Now the next one we're going to do pop. And pop will take the last item off of the array or stack. 
whatever you wish to say. And but we have to make sure that it's not empty first. So we use our is empty function. And if it's not empty, we call the function array pop on this cars. Simple. Now the last thing we want to do is top. So again, we want to make sure it's not empty. And if it's not empty, then we just return this car's first element, which is zero. Now that we've pretty much created our garage class, let's move on to the car class. I've created a file here called car.php, and let's go ahead and start up. So we start off with class car and open curly braces, open and closing curly braces. And the three variables we're going to want to associate with the car are going to be the year of the car, the make of the car, and the model of the car. So let's go ahead and create those. Private year, private make, and private model. And like we did in the first tutorial, we're going to use that construct function as well. So public function construct, and we're going to take in a year, a make, and a model. And then we'll just assign them. Remember using this um, is associated with the class itself. So we can have same name variables. So then we say this year equals year, this make equals make, and this model equals model. Simple. And uh, let's go ahead and create those getters. So public function get year. This will return this year. And public function get make. This will return this make. And public function get model will return this model. Now those those are pretty much the, th the basic functions we need for a car. But as we did in the first tutorial, we learned about the toString method. So instead of having to call these getters every single time we want to display it, we can just create a toString method where we can simply just echo out an instance of the class and it will return the year, the make, and the model in one line. So return this year. Let's go ahead and put a space in there. This make, another space, and this model simple. Alright. Now uh, let's let's create a two string method for the garage. So public function two string. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna return the name of the garage, how many cars are in the garage, and if there's any cars in the garage, we'll list all the cars below it. So let's create a a return variable, we'll call it output, and we'll just start off by saying garage, and then a colon, and then we'll return this name and a break. And a new line, just for nice. And now let's create another variable. Let's call let's call a variable called total cars, and we'll just assign it to this total cars. And now after that break where we return the garage name, let's go ahead and say currently holds and then we say total cars cars and we're breaking a new line. So now we can check if this if it's not empty then we can loop through all of our cars and just print them out or in our case we're going to concatenate it to output so for each this cars as car output dot equals car, car but you might be wondering can I can I call this two string method on a car sure so now we have that and all we have to do is return output 
So now we're going to go into our main file that I created here, and this will just be used for testing purposes. Now, when we're not using the class, or well, we're not when we're trying to use the class, but we're not actually in the file, we have to include these classes. So include car.php and include garage.php. This gives us access to using those classes. Instead of instead of like Java, where as long as the class exists somewhere in the directory, it'll automatically be included. We need to include these in order to use them, just like in, in C++. Alright, so now let's create a garage. So we say garage equals, and we say new garage, and then we, we got to give it a name. So let's call it PHP Squad Garage. And let's put five vehicles in there. So now if I were to echo out garage, it will tell me garage name is PHP Squad Garage, and there should be no cars in there. Hmm. Where was that? Got a little error here saying on line 30, 22. Line 22. Ah, we just forgot to call this. Very important. Alright, this, boom. So go ahead and save it. Now if I run it again, I should get the garage name is PHP Squad Garage, and it currently holds zero cars. So let's go ahead and let's, let's push some cars in there. So we use garage, push, a new car. We can just, remember it's year, make, model. So now if we did this correctly, when we echo garage, it should say well, there's one car in there, and then it should list that car. Look at that. So now if we, we add a few more cars, so let's just, I don't know, 2005, 2006. And if you run it, there should be, oh, we need a break. Okay. Just like that. So now it shows us that there's 2004, 2005, 2006, and it holds three cars. So we made it so it can only have five cars. So if we try we're going to reach the maximum, so now there should be five cars in there. What happens if we try to add one more? I'm adding 2009 Chevrolet Impala now. This should not be added since the garage is full. Look at that. So let, let's play around with this. After the two cars, okay, and then let's let's say garage pop. Let's get rid of that 2005. We don't want it. And let's add two more two more cars. Okay, so we got it. And then we popped the 2005 off, and then we added the 2006. So you can see the 2005 is no longer in the garage. And here we can we can say garage top. We can just get the top of the garage, which should still be the 2004 Chevy Impala. It is perfect. So now, if, what if we let's get rid of these few here? Let's get rid of these two. If we call garage pop twice and echo the garage, it should be there. Should be no more cars. Look at that, no more cars. And if you tried to, to pop it again, whoops, it won't do anything because it's empty now. It can't. It can't remove anything. Obviously you can you can always 
You can throw some exceptions if you wanted to, but we're not going to get into exceptions just yet. But this this is pretty much using multiple classes to get something silly done. But you can now see how multiple classes can work together. Um, and like I said, the push function should only take a car. So if I tried, so if I tried calling push and the number five, it shouldn't let it. Yep, we're gonna get an error. Argument one past the garage push must be an instance of a car. It can tell you that the integer was given. Blah -dee, blah -dee, blah -dee. So this is one way to make sure that only the proper data is being put into your class and used properly. Uh, that's that's multiple classes in PHP. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, make sure to comment, favorite, like it, whatever. Subscribe for more PHP tutorials. Um, yeah, and always, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.